The general body of knowledge that we are sharing in these episodes has been about productivity being the greatest qualifier in the kingdom of God. We've been saying that uh, it's easy for us to look at spirituality and exalt spirituality above all things, and there is a place for that, but we will lose a lot when we think that only what we need to do is to be spiritual enough. There has got to be some application of productivity to the to the spirituality that we do have and therefore i've been talking about the pillars of productivity at the end of the day uh, in the past uh, several episodes we've been talking about the external pillars of productivity environmental and leadership pillars of productivity but we started talking about the internal drivers of productivity in the past few episodes and so today we're going to continue with the same thought pattern and i want us to see two more internal drivers of productivity we'll do a recap of what we've already started with the two of the internal drivers of productivity that we did in the episodes yesterday and then we're going to continue and do two today so that we can be able to learn these things are things that you and i already know they are not a foreign in any way. So stay tuned even as we learn together. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. We can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy! 
A special thanks to everyone who is listening to this uh, episodes here on Live Signatures Radio. I really do appreciate you taking some time and uh, tuning in and telling me, giving me feedback and telling me how it has been a blessing to you. I really do appreciate that. And I'm asking that uh, even as we continue to listen to this, just go one step ahead and subscribe to the channel. It can be on any one of those podcast podcasting applications that you have. It might be Stitcher, it might be Castbox, it might be Podvine. Just sign up and uh, subscribe so they don't miss any episode. And also go one step ahead as we are creating this virtual incubator for purpose, productivity and resilience. And uh, share this information with as many people in your common grounds, in your uh, in circles of influence as possible so that we can be able to rise ourselves together. In the episode that has passed, we talked about the internal drivers of productivity and uh, we were, were already deep inside of this even as we're starting to wind up the whole long series about productivity being the greatest qualifier in the kingdom of God, that God needs us to be productive as much as he needs us to be holy and, and to be righteous. And we shared two episodes, I mean, we shared two attitudes, two, two great drivers of productivity, which was attitude and intentionality. We also shared about urgency and passion, but I want us to share two more in this episode today. So if you want to catch up with what we've been doing, please go back in the previous two episodes to look at the internal drivers of attitude, intentionality, urgency, and passion. Those are four attitudes. I want us to add two more today, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. The (laughs) 15th... The 15th pillar of productivity, which is today the 5th in terms of the internal drivers, is discipline. You saw that coming. There is no way that you and I are going to be disciplined, I mean, are going to be productive if we are not disciplined in any way. So discipline is critical. Discipline is important for our productivity. Towards our productivity, we've got to be disciplined. What is discipline? Discipline is basically doing what we must today and postponing the things that we want to do that are cozy, that are, you know, things that minister to our uh, our bodies, the things that minister, make us feel good and make us feel no pressure, you know, relaxing and eating and drinking and having fun and leisure and pleasure. So discipline is basically postponing those things so that you can do something productive today. Productivity is directly connected to discipline. You never saw somebody who is indisciplined and productive at the same time. Those things are mutually exclusive. The more you are disciplined, the more you are productive. The more you are indisciplined, the more you are unproductive. It doesn't matter what kind of talent and gift and passion and capacity and all abilities that you've been gifted with. As long as you are indisciplined, you will will not be productive. This tells us something. It tells us that all of us can be candidates of productivity, at least if we are disciplined. In fact, I dare say, ladies and gentlemen, that the person who is disciplined can be much more productive than the person who is not disciplined. Even if the person who is disciplined is not with talent, is not with skill, is not with gifts, is not with abilities, is not with passion, these things can be overridden by grit and discipline and determination by putting your hands on the plow, making sure that you are postponing the pleasure and the leisure so that you can do something right now with whatever is available before you today. As compared to someone who is so gifted, so talented, so passionate, you know, they are so good, they are so wow in terms of the way they do stuff, but they lack discipline you will be more productive than them so when we are when we're hiring people by the way sometimes we'll rather we'll rather go for person a person who has this internal drive of discipline than the person who is uh, than the person who is filled with so much uh, gifts talents abilities capacity passion and all that and they are indisciplined 
We don't want that kind of a person. We would rather be uh, stuck with someone whom we know for sure we can count on them because they are disciplined. So, number 15, discipline. I think it's the greatest fight we have on a daily basis to fight for our discipline. All of us, all of us, the greatest fight that we have, I normally say it is a fight for momentum, but it's also the fight for discipline because momentum is brought about by discipline and nothing else. Without it, timeliness, tidiness, urgency, and other aspects of productivity will greatly be affected. See, discipline is the highest drive of productivity for it helps for us to focus on productivity regardless of how we feel, regardless of what the environment is around us is discipline is going to deliver that productivity not to say that feelings are not needed and not to say that all those things are not needed but discipline as a way of cutting through those things and negating their importance all right number 16 which is the the sixth driver of in uh, the sixth internal drive of productivity I say this even as I come to a close, is enthusiasm. And I know sometimes when we're talking about discipline, the idea of enthusiasm is not necessarily there. In fact, enthusiasm is something connected to feeling. It's something connected to... Uh, it is probably the direct opposite of discipline because discipline negates feelings. Enth- enthusiasm flies with feelings. It gets wings, you know, with feelings. But discipline doesn't. Discipline, whether the feelings are there or not, doesn't matter. But enthusiasm also can be linked to discipline in that the more you continue being disciplined, the more enthusiasm band wagons on you. Enthusiasm is contagious. It's a a contagious fire that does not, you know, just fire good feelings within us and chemicals in our bodies released but also it fires positive vibes to people around us in in other words the guys that we're collaborating with you you see this in marriage <laughs> if your spouse is you know looking like they are so not so enthusiastic about you not so enthusiastic about the things that you're doing guess what you will not do it I mean, you will not collaborate. You will not fulfill the things that you want to fulfill together because there is, you don't feel connected. So enthusiasm is, is not just important for you as an individual, but it's also important for the people you're collaborating with in order to bring about productivity. But it starts with you. That's the interesting thing about uh, enthusiasm. It, it starts with you'd rather be the producer of enthusiasm than the consumer of enthusiasm. There are those guys in our teams who just produce enthusiasm and we, we feed off of them and we love what they are doing and so on and we just feed off of them and, 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 and we, we, we are so happy. But then we cannot depend on them all, all along. We need to also be producers of this enthusiasm. We need to be the ones who are smiling and happy and excited about the things that we're doing. And this enthusiasm, by the way, has got to be determined by the things that we're doing. That's why it's important to make sure that whatever it is that you want to be successful at, it's something that you really love, something that you really want to do in the first place, something that you are called to do in the first place. It becomes easy for you to be enthusiastic about it because you love it. But I know at some point in time, there are some things that we must do. That's why I talked about discipline in this episode. There are some things that we must do, even some things that we hate to do, but we must do them. And therefore, there are no feelings in there. It doesn't mean that everything that we want to do must be something that we love to do. There's some there's some instances where some instances where we will need to go through the things that we hate, right? So that we can be able to get the thing, to the things that we love to do. But what I'm communicating in this episode is that as much as we're balancing discipline and and enthusiasm, they are both important. You cannot be someone who is just downtrodden and with a long face when it comes to productivity all day long. Sometimes switch on the turn on the knob, turn off, I mean, turn up the knob of enthusiasm and bring in life, bring in uh, excitement, bring in, uh, you know, enjoyment, bring in fire and fervor and zealousness into your work, into your productivity. Guess what? You become much more productive 
this way than not. If you find yourself that you are downtrodden, you're feeling so bad about the things that you're doing, get help. Get sorted first, as fast as possible before you can be productive. Otherwise, the longer this lack of enthusiasm pervades in your life, it not only affects you, corrodes your attitude, and stifles your productivity and stifles your creativity at the end of the day it also affects other people nobody wants to be in the company of someone who is down you know downtrodden and someone who who has a bad attitude someone who is not enthusiastic people avoid you like a plague tomorrow we're going to look at two more internal drivers of productivity but until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.